Hey, it's DB, and today I'm going to show you how to set up a multi-seller shop where I made almost a billion in coins today, so I did make a ton of money. Before I begin, I have a small request. If you think Islands is a cool game, hit that like button and smash the subscribe button if you are new. So I invited some vid crew members to set up some shops on my island to make up a multi-mall. So a multi-mall is essentially when you have multiple sellers on your island with their own vending machines. So how this works is you're going to give build permissions to some friends. I know, I know what you're thinking. Oh my gosh, DB, you always tell me not to ever give build permissions to my friends and never to trust people. Yeah, that's correct. I would say that's still true today, but I will tell you there are some exceptions to this rule. So if you have a friend that you often give build access to already and you've never had any issues with them with stealing or anything like that, then you might be okay setting up a multi-seller shop with them so again you whenever you give build permissions everyone has access to your vending machines right so if i were to go and invite two people or three people to my island and give them all build access well with my shop they have access to all my money too right they have access to all my items that are in my vendings they have access to all of the money that i put in them so you got to be really 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 careful about who you give access to your island especially if you have vending machines around because again if someone goes and buys like maybe one of my purple fireflies then there goes you know if i'm selling it for 40 million or 50 million then there goes 50 million if they have access to my my vending machines and if they are the type to you know steal stuff from me so again just be sure to only give access to people that you truly trust don't give access to just anyone just because you want to do this. So be careful. I don't want to hear messages of people getting scammed because they went out and gave build access to someone they didn't truly trust. Don't do it just to do it, right? Unfortunately, I can't help you if you get scammed and the game team can't either. So nothing anyone could do if you lose your items. So if you're wondering, well, why would you ever want to set up a multi-mall in the first place? Well, there's a couple benefits. First, you're going to have visitors staying longer, right? Buyers, buyers and sellers are going to stay longer. Next, you typically sell out more when your island is published, right? So if you sell out quickly, then people are just like, eh, it's an empty shop. It's kind of it's kind of dead here because a lot of the times it's really, really hard for you to keep up with, you know, buying and selling. So at least people are able to go somewhere else. Once your items are out, maybe they can go buy from someone else and vice versa. So it does actually help. This is the same kind of mentality of a shopping mall in general, right? If you've ever been to a physical shopping mall, that's why you do that because of traffic. Traffic builds up. Everyone goes to one location, so higher traffic. So if you have three other merchants that are on your island selling, then they don't actually have to have Pro Pass, which is a really cool thing for you to do for them because when you publish your island and you give them access to be able to sell stuff, you're helping them out. So it's always nice to help out friends. Just make sure, make sure you trust them. So in my case, I trust my staff fully. So th this is my vid crew. So of course they're not going to steal from me. I mean, if they need an item, generally speaking, I'll give it to them. So they don't really need to steal from me, right? So I trust them. And, you know, of course you, you need to keep an eye on things, but you, you know, they're, they're not going to steal from each other. They know, they know it's not worth it, especially at the risk of getting removed from my team. The downside is you might lose some sellers and buyers from your own shop. So you're going to have to be pretty competitive with your pricing. So, you know, you don't want to have your prices be way too high for them to not buy from you. Now, what I would advise is try to separate everyone's shops kind of far away from each other so that there's clear separation of shops, right? So you don't want to have situations where people are asking other people like, you know, hey, queen, you know, can you restock this because their vending machines are too close to another sellers? So don't like combine them and put them in the same space. They should have their separate rooms or just separate areas altogether. And what I would say is let them build their own space. So that's what I did is I let them build their own space. That way it's customized to how they want it to be. Otherwise, if I just kind of set up the machines for them and they stock them, there's no personality there for one. And two is a lot of people like to set up their shops a certain way. So especially for ease of management, everyone has their own style. So it's a good idea to let them build their own space for their own shop. And again, make sure you're reiterating boundaries. So if you have more than just maybe one friend that's selling on your island, make sure they know their boundaries. Just just tell them, hey, you're not allowed to touch anyone else's machines, right? That may not finish it. You know, you might need to actually reiterate that a couple of times. So make sure you're telling them over and over that do not touch each other's machines. Again, you know, I wouldn't go straight up and do what I did. Maybe you add just one friend and that way you don't really have to have that conversation because it should be assumed, right? You already, they, they know not to touch your stuff. You know, you might have to tell them don't touch my stuff, but just, you know, be careful. That's all I'm going to say is be careful. Another thing I would recommend if you are really worried that someone's going to steal from another player, 
Just don't give them build access when you publish and then they could just collect their money individually after your published island is closed down, right? So you just go back to a VIP server, let them collect their money individually, and then you can republish later, let them restock and all that kind of stuff, and then you can publish again. Another option, if you are worried about you know permissions or anything like that, you can always start out with consignments. What consignments means is they are going to give you items for you to sell for them, and you're not gonna buy them from them, right? So say someone had maybe like a rage blade and they wanted you to sell it for them. Well, you could take the item for free, right? You're gonna take that item for free, and with the acknowledgement and agreement that you are going to sell that item on your island and you are going to keep a percentage. You might say, you know, I'll, I'll keep 10% of anything I sell. So if they give you a rage blade and you sell it for 50 million, you get 5 million off of that, right? And then you give them 45 million. That way you can make money off of someone else's items. That's totally cool too. You can say like, okay, for, you know, smelters, I will sell, you know, a hundred of your smelters for 5% and then you just give them a cut at the end of that. So that's another way of doing things for shared islands, but that is a totally different scenario than what I'm gonna show on this video. Now, another thing I would say is make sure there's clear signage of whose shop is whose, right? So make sure it's clear that this is DV shop, this is Morales' shop, this is Official Gamer shop, this is Queen's shop. That way, if there's any weirdness for pricing, so like someone's maybe overpricing something, you're not getting the price shaming, right? Because it's not your price, it's someone else's price. So before you publish your island, I would always recommend disable all your totems prior so you can reduce some lag for buyers, especially mobile players. And then another tip I would give you is try to remember where things are inside your vending machines and how you can do that. There's three ways you can do that. One is you could put a sign in front of your vending machine of what the name of the item that was in the vending was. So that way you don't forget you know, what was in that vending machine and you can easily restock it. Another thing you could do is you could just make a list. So write down on a piece of paper, you know, this is what number one machine had, this is what number two machine had and so on. But the best way to do it, in my opinion, is just stack another vending machine right behind the one that you're selling from and just put it in sell mode. That way you can see at all times what the item was, right? So you basically, you're gonna stock both machines. One's gonna be in buy mode, the one that is in front of it. And when that machine runs out, you always have another machine behind it in sell mode that maybe you're not actually, you don't always have to buy stuff from people in that machine, right? So you could actually just have that machine there just for visibility and display so that you remember what was in it. So that way you can say, okay, well, there's cry iron in this one. This one was buffle core crystals and without having to like guess based on pricing. And I kind of messed up on that. I should have set it up that way. I usually do. But in this video, I totally forgot to set up my vendings in that way. And it would have saved me a ton of time and I would have made a lot more money. And I'd also say that the less vending machines you have to manage, the better. And try to keep all your vending machines filled with items and restocked with money if you can. If you don't want to buy any more of that item, you could just remove the item from it so people don't keep bugging you. Because if you're done buying that item, just take the item out so they stop bugging you. Otherwise, you're just gonna keep getting the same message. Please restock the cry gold. Please restock the cry gold money. I wanna sell you cry gold. I wanna sell you cry gold. And they're just gonna be, they're gonna be chasing you around asking you to restock money because it looks like you are buying. So take that item out if you can, unless you're using it for display. In that case, you just say, I'm done buying. You just tell them, oh, I'm, I'm not buying anymore. Now you should also reference price guides if you're not sure what an item is going for. Most sellers have their own sense of what something's worth though. So if you are an avid seller, then you don't need this information. But if you don't know how to price things, and this is very common actually, this is very common, you should use my price guide that I've linked in the description, which should help you, you know, at least initially set up your machines. And then I do try to, I do try to update that guide maybe once a week or so. Now, when it's time to publish and assuming you're giving your friends build access while you're published, just give them the code first before you start promoting the code. But how you can promote the code, it's pretty easy. Just go to the various trading channels on the Discord. So like I have a huge trading channel. And then of course there's the official Discord. And then what you can do is as soon as you're ready to go, just make a list in your posting of the things you're buying and selling. And then at the very bottom, just put your code. Say, just join this code to buy or sell. Now, once all of your friends are joined, just make sure you remind them that if they get disconnected, they might not have a spot because some people did that on mine and they couldn't get back in. So make sure they know as soon as it's full, it's gonna be a big struggle to get back in. Now, one thing to note during the duration of this event, I'm going to clearly have a lot more buyers due to fans visiting and wanting to buy from me. However, I will tell you, I underpriced most of my items. So compared to most stores, I've got really, really good prices. Most of my items are underpriced, not all of them though, because what happens is a lot of people 
will just stay around and not they stop buying they're just there to hang out and they want it you know they want screenshots they want to chat and stuff and then i also get yelled at if i'm too busy trying to restock machines because they're yelling at me because i'm not replying while i'm auto clicking and a lot of people don't realize i'm sitting there trying to refill machines with an auto clicker and while i'm refilling machines with an auto clicker i'm unable to chat right because i'm trying to restock like you know two million coins and that takes forever because of the way the game works it just takes forever to refill so they don't fully understand that, which, you know, again, if I had an alt, it would be so much easier and more relaxing because I could just hang out, right? So another thing I would recommend is if you're going to shut down your server for any reason, maybe to restock, maybe to gather yourself because it's just kind of overwhelming. If that's the case, what I would do is just give them a heads up. Thank them, thank them for, you know, shopping on your mall and then let them know why you're gonna have to leave because you're tired or you're just gonna head off. That way they have a chance to go to another shop. It's really frustrating for me as a buyer when I go to a published server and then I get kicked because they shut down without telling anyone. They just shut down and it's kind of abrupt, you know, that you're just suddenly kicked to a public server and if you have a really, really big island, you're kind of messed over and you have a risk of data loss, right? You might lose the things you just bought from their island. So it's kind of, you know, just, it's nice to just give people a heads up. But during this transaction here, I actually pulled off, I think I made like almost a billion, not quite a billion, but pretty close to a billion. Granted, I probably did make a billion because I also spent a lot, right? I spent a lot of coins on stuff. And so I've got a lot of new inventory that I haven't even tried selling yet. So you're probably thinking, hey, DB, this is a great video and all but i actually don't have the pro pass so i can't even do this well if you know of someone with pro pass why don't you ask them if you can sell on their island now you can't just go up to a random person or a youtuber and say hey you have pro pass can i sell on your island that's not going to cut it i guarantee you they're not going to trust you but if you have a friend that trusts you and they have pro pass and you don't you know say hey do you mind if i set up a shop on your island and you publish it i promise you i will not touch your vending machines just be proactive about the trust part and you know again if you're trying to scam them then shame on you but you can also just you know approach the consignment aspect like hey can you set up a shop over here i'll give you the items to put in it anything that i sell out of that you just give me the money on um and you know or you can make a commission you can take you can keep 10 percent of all sales that way there's incentive for them to actually do this with you now if you're asking your friend with nothing in return if you're like hey just do this for me and you're not offering them in something in return, at least do that. Like offer them something in return, they're your friend. Maybe they're gonna come back and say, you know what, you don't need to give me anything, but always try to offer. Don't always, don't use your friends, don't use them. You know, make sure you're like, hey, I will give you something if you help me out because you're helping me out, I wanna help you out. So I want this to be mutually beneficial to both of us. So, you know, I'm gonna give you a percentage of any sales that you sell of my items on your island. Alternatively, they might just say, hey, let me just buy the items off of you and we're good right if that's the case great then you just won anyway but maybe in the end because you're not forcing them and you're not demanding or not trying to push be pushy about having a multi-cell you know set up on their island maybe they're going to trust and give you it maybe they will give it to you it never hurts to ask and if they're like what do you mean multi-seller type setup you can just reference this video and let them know well check out the video by db and you know they might actually be like hey that sounds cool that sounds fun let's try it out because it is actually a lot of fun in fact it's way more fun to have a multi-seller setup than selling on your own because at least there's some activity on the island right so you're not it's not all on you so it's nice to have some other sellers on your island doing stuff and restocking their stuff so you can just kind of take a break and know that you know your stuff's not going to be all empty when you come back because they're selling stuff on their side of the island so people are going to likely hang around now if your vendings are all empty everyone's going to leave so you you know again benefits of keeping them on your server so i hope this video was helpful to you if you like the video please hit that like button and if you are new to the channel, if you don't mind hitting that subscribe button if you'd like to see more videos like this one. And I will see you all next time. Adios, amigos.